Let's do a little more with Newton's universal law of gravitation. Uh, the first thing we'll do is we'll think about Newton's third law along with gravitation. Uh, second thing we'll do is we'll look at something called superposition. And then the third thing we'll do is we'll look at gravitational field. Uh, so Newton's third law, let's remind ourselves what that is. Newton's third law says that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Or a better way to say it is that the force of A on B is equal and opposite to the force of B on A. And if you look at Newton's universal law of gravitation, the two masses are being multiplied by each other. And that's related to the gravitational force. If you change the order of the two masses in that equation, if you switch which one is the one feeling the force and which one is the one causing the force, it doesn't change the magnitude of the force. So if you have the Earth and the Moon, one way to think about it is, the force of the Earth on the Moon is equal and opposite to the force of the Moon on the Earth. And if we draw that picture, what you'll see is that matches with what we know already about Newton's universal law of gravitation. We know that the force has to be attractive. So if the Moon is attracted to the Earth, and the force is toward the Earth on the Moon, then both Newton's universal law of gravitation and the third law say that the same amount of force has to act on the Earth and being and cause it to be attracted to the Moon. They're equal and opposite forces. Okay, um, let's look at superposition. When I say superposition, what that really means is that we're talking about forces adding together like vectors, at least in this context. There are other ways to use the word. But let's think about the force on an object that's near different masses. So let's say we have the Earth and the Moon, and we're going to have a little object, and we're going to move that object around. First, we're going to put the object on the surface of the Earth. So that object on the surface of the Earth, it should feel a force caused by the Earth, and it should feel a force caused by the Moon. So we're going to draw arrows to represent those forces. If it's on the Earth, the force caused by the Earth is going to be much greater than the force on that object caused by the moon. And there's two reasons why. First, it's closer to the Earth. And the second is the Earth has more mass than the moon. So there's going to be a big arrow that's going to show that it's being attracted to the Earth. And there's going to be a small arrow on that object that shows that it's attracted to the moon as well. So there's those two gravitational forces acting on that object. If you add those two forces together, as vectors, the sum of them, or the net force, is going to be toward the Earth. So, yeah, there's a gravitational force on everybody who walks around the Earth that's caused by the Moon. But that force that the Moon causes is pretty small compared to the gravitational force on the Earth. It's big enough to cause things like tides, um, but we don't notice it in our everyday walking around. Okay, now let's think about an object that's on the surface of the Moon. So an object on the surface of the moon will also experience a force caused by the moon, and it'll experience a force caused by the Earth. Um, the force by the moon for this object is going to be much greater, because it's much closer to the moon. Yeah, the moon has less mass, but the object is much closer to the moon, so that force is going to be greater. And the total force is going to be similar, it's going to be toward the moon. Okay, let's think about an object that's halfway between the Earth and the moon. Well, if it's halfway between the Earth and the Moon, uh, it's going to have a force caused by the Earth, and it's going to have a force caused by the Moon. Those two forces are in opposite directions. So the total amount of force would be those two things added together. Now, the force that's caused by the Earth is going to be bigger. It's the same distance from the Earth and the Moon if it's in the middle, but the Earth has more mass, so that gravitational force would be bigger. So the total amount of force on an object that's halfway between the Earth and the Moon would be toward the Earth. Okay. Now you can imagine there's probably a point somewhere between the Earth and the Moon, closer to the Moon, where the force caused by the Earth and the force caused by the Moon have the same size and they cancel out. And that's an interesting little point. Um, if you were hanging out there, the gravitational force on you would be zero. The total gravitational force would be zero because you have two forces acting in opposite directions and they balance each other. 
So the total amount of force would be zero. Okay. All right. Next topic is the gravitational field. So Newton's universal law of gravitation, it's a big equation. It's kind of clunky. Um, doing it over and over for different masses gets kind of annoying. So we talk about the force per mass sometimes. That's often a useful quantity to think about. Um, the force gravitational force per mass at a location is called the gravitational field strength at that location. Um, now we can also do a little bit of math. So if we're talking about the gravitational force per mass at a location, well, we have an equation for the gravitational force. That's Newton's universal law of gravitation. So I'll make that substitution. And the mass underneath, that's the mass that would feel the force at that location. So that mass is going to cancel out. And we're left with this equation, gm over r squared. That is an equation for the gravitational field strength at a location that's a distance r from an object which has a mass m. So that's the gravitational field at a certain location in space caused by a mass. And we represent the gravitational field strength with the letter g, which should be familiar because we've already seen g. If you calculate the value of g, the gravitational field strength on the surface of the Earth, well, let's see what happens. Mass of the Earth, we know that. Um, and if you're on the surface of the Earth, the distance that you are from the center of the Earth is just the radius of the Earth. All right. And if we go to the gravitational field strength, well, that's the force per mass. And we just saw we can simplify that as gm over r squared. If we put the numbers in, surprise, surprise, you get 9.78, which rounds to 9.8 meters per second squared. Hmm, that should look familiar. Um, gravitational field strength is what we've been using. It's also the acceleration due to gravity. They mean the same thing. Uh, and in fact, there's another way to write the units, even. Uh, gravitational field strength is the force per mass. Well, if it's force per mass, the units can be written as newtons per kilogram. So you have two options for correct SI units for gravitational field strength, meters per second squared or newtons per kilogram.